Step into my love. Be embraced in my love. Be consumed in my love. And the Lord says, come. Come to the water. Come to my river. And be with me, said the Lord. Spirit of the Lord is, mm -hmm. there is liberty. Amen. There is deliverance. There is freedom. Yokes are broken. Chains, fetters, captivities are overturned. Bondages are broken. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Whatever you have come with tonight, receive freedom. Mm. Receive deliverance. Mm -hmm. Receive salvation. Receive breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Receive liberation. In the name of Jesus, yes. receive it. Everything you so desire, you so fast for. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I was doing some reading this place we sit there. some reading this afternoon and it says there are three the, the, the Bible refers to three types and if the Bible uses three different words for life the first one is bios b-i-o-s bios and it's from there you get the word for biology bioethics and that's just the ordinary life mm -hmm. it's, it's just bare existence that, that would be for anything bios it would be for anything the second life the bible refers to is the word suke which can be transliterated uh, uh, into psyche. That's mm -hmm. what we call psyche. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the Greek, it's suke. Mm -hmm. That's a higher level of life. That is what everybody has. Mm -hmm. Most often, it is called the soul. Mm -hmm. The soul. That's what... It is a higher level than bios. Mm -hmm. this, this is what gives you your concrete existence. This is what every man, every woman is, or has, suke, or psyche. But then there's the third level called zoe. Amen. And that is the abundant and eternal life. This one is not accessible to all. You only find this in Christ. Amen. Zoe or Zoe. You only find this kind of life in Christ. That is the kind of life you receive 
when you come to Christ, is the highest form of life. You know why? Because that is the same kind of life that God has. Amen. So John chapter 10 verse 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Amen. That life Jesus is referring to is to him. Mm -hmm. That's the abundant life. When you have it, it takes you above this realm. When you have it, 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 it places you on a different realm, in a different realm, on a different level. It goes <clears throat> beyond the challenges of this life. It is the life of God. And if you are in Christ, you have it. You have it. You just need to be walking in it. You need to be tapping into it every time. You need to be drawing from it. Because it's, it's there. It's in you. The moment you come to Christ, you have it. But we don't enjoy it. We don't benefit from it because we are not tapping from it. We are not tapping from it. Mm -hmm. My people are destroyed because of ignorance, for lack of knowledge. You are that life. Bring it out. Bring it out. Let it flow. The highest form of life is in you. Is in you. When bios and suitcases finish, this one can keep you going. Yeah. It can it can keep you firing on. And people are wondering, you're supposed to be there. My my wife walked. We were Kenya at the time. She was so sick. That when she got to the hospital, I wasn't there, I, I, I traveled, I got to another place. We wondered how she made it. When she told them, she drove me out by herself. They wondered how she made it to the hospital. Because all the parameters, all the tests, everything says you should be, you sh you should be there. <laughs> but that highest form of life mm -hmm. kicked in Amen. when there was no life again. Amen. At a point, they got her ready for surgery. But just before the wheel line to the tell her, she was just reminding me this uh, two days ago. Then they, they did the final test and they, they, the, the doctors and everybody was shocked. Mm -hmm. What happened? We, had, we saw something before. Where is it? That was the end. That was the end. You have that highest form of life. Tap into it. Amen. When there's no life, again, this one can keep you going. Amen. It can keep you firing on. That's the advantage in Christ. Praise God. Pastor Ray, is, uh, Ray and Leslie is really leading us tonight. Please welcome them. Mm -hmm. uh, this man of God is an apostle to the nations. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are so honored that the Lord brought him into our midst. That he brought us together. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. To do this ministry yes. together. Mm -hmm. Together. Yes. 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 Here's another apostle. We, 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 we all need each other. Amen. 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 It's, it's to stay here. Uh, so you were in Kenya. Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Because uh, our leaders in Kenya said, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bishop uh, Andrew and uh, Bishop John Amande and uh, one of our, our leaders there, Richard Poe, who are watching this tonight or will be watching it. So when are when are you coming back to Kenya? I said, 
well, I don't know when I'm coming back to Kenya. Uh, we, we don't know that yet. But we will, we will be in Liberia for the month of February. That's our plan. Well, God, God willing. Mm -hmm. And from there, we'll be ministering in West Africa. But uh, being as you know your way around Kenya, maybe you should just send you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots going on in Kenya too, but isn't it awesome? You know, uh, the nations, the mm -hmm. nations, and, and uh, um, you know, uh, I'm so excited about the nations mm -hmm. and how Yeshua Hamashiach, how Jesus is just pouring out. Um, and are you excited about what God's going to be pouring here into Canada? Did you know oh! this is our time? <laughs> Who was that? that was good. Where did that come from? Oh, I think the bro I think Brock is this broke something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, praise the Lord! So we're going to be ministering in that tonight, and um, what this is about here is it's um, one of the things that we've done in the last thirty years. We We've, we've only done this a few times. So uh, it's exciting to do it here for the first time uh, in Manitoba. And it's a, it's a prophetic act, okay? It's an illustrative sermon, but it's a prophetic act under, um, let's just say, the covering of apostles and prophets. So, but Jesus, the most important thing, is a cornerstone, Amen. right? Amen. So if anybody, is anybody here... Uh, that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Just come on up now and we'll, uh, Pastor Fuji will lead you to the Lord. So there's no there's no point in waiting for to the end of the service, right? Yeah. Or, you know, we've got an evangelist there. And Murray, he's just fired up. He's, he, he, he just he leads people to the Lord. So I kind of think most of the people here know Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't, we're going to get to know Jesus a lot more. Mm -hmm. But this prophetic act is going to help you... Uh, when we come to the place to know the Lord, you know, when that first light, that first fire comes on, you know, when that fire comes out, you know, it says to be continu con con what? continually be filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when was the last time you went to the gas pump and filled up your car? <laughs> or your vehicle? So every, from, from now on, every time you pull in with your vehicle or anybody else's vehicle, and you are naturally getting something filled up. Say, I want to be filled up with the Holy Spirit here too, Lord. Just mm -hmm. Let there be a download. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have a car, just say, Lord, fill me up again. Fill me up again. Be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Because if you run out of gas, it's because you're leaking. Mm -hmm. they're, they're <laughs> you're leaking out. <laughs> it's leaking out. God wants to pour in and keep it to stay. But why would it be leaking out? We're going to talk about that. Um, and another thing is that when we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, was everything done on the cross? Yeah. Everything, everything. Okay, so we're, we, it's finished. It is finished. Okay, but there are some principles and precepts that we fall back into that sometimes we have to make a correction for, because of our thinking, right? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. That's what this is about. Okay, has nothing to do with your salvation, you're saved. Has everything ab about you coming into a greater relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're, this is going to go over the next six weeks. But uh, we started teaching it last night at, at, at our home group. And uh, so we're going to, so don't be in a rush. I'm just saying, you don't have to be in a rush to fill these things out. Okay? Uh, it will be accessible to you if you want to put something into here. Oh my goodness. Okay. You might say, well, first of all, we're going to baptize Marie in this here. So there's nothing impossible with our God. Everybody's enjoying that. So there's going to be a number, number of things that are going to be happening uh, while we're ministering. And the Holy Spirit does not interrupt the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Okay, so because the, these here have red ink in them, okay? Now, I'm, you can use any kind of paper if you've got paper. 
And it's a petition. And there's different, there's different things where if you take a petition, in, in scripture it says nail it to the cross. Have you ever done that? Or bring all your petitions to the cross. Okay, so this is a shadow and a type just to help you with this. Mm -hmm. And over the next six weeks or eight weeks, and, and I, I pray when we get into our, our new facility, whatever that's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, when we did this, uh, the last time we did this, uh, there was a few people that were a part of that or that know the, uh, know the outcome, so just kind of keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, but what's going to happen is when you write when you write your petition it, in red. Well, go ahead. <laughs> so, and, and perhaps uh, another word is okay. Would, another word might be that just whatever whatever is on your heart that yeah. you really don't want to carry anymore. Mm -hmm. So we bring our prayers and, and we petition to the Lord. Um, so it, it's, it's like whatever. Whatever it is that you know, Holy Spirit shows you. You may already know what stuff bugs you about. You know that you want to get rid of things, um, or you may not until Holy Spirit brings it to your attention. And so, for for an example, um, many years ago, when um, and, and I go back to when we were just newly walking with God, and, and um, when um, we were being baptized in water. And it, what stuck with us was that our pastor at the time, you know, just he says, whatever you want to get rid of, what you don't want anymore, write it on the paper. And then when you go into the baptismal tank, just drop it. And it was very interesting because then, of course, the ink, it, it kind of ran off the paper. Nobody but Jesus and, and you know, and me or, or whoever would know, like, just personally, you know what you put on that paper, and that's between you and the Lord. And so, this is a similar idea, just not a baptismal tank. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, the, so the idea being, whatever it is that you feel has been weighing you down, whatever it is you, so for me, one of the things, I, I thought after, I thought, dang, why didn't I put that on paper? But, you know, because <laughs> when it came to the Lord, um, I really had a very big potty mouth, it was not good <laughs> from the days that I, you know, and in the nursing background and so on, sometimes, you know, the language can be really not good. Um, so, <laughs> so that was one thing I put on the paper. Mm -hmm. um, later on, I wish the heck I had put smoking, because I was a smoker. Oh. Dang, why didn't I put that down? Anyway, <laughs> the, point, the point was that from from the time of that day I was baptized and dropped that thing in the water, mm. I never ever struggled Jesus. with my language. Mm. Not uh, not ever. Mm. I never strength, especially the really subtle stuff. But I never struggled with bad language then. Mm. So that's why I say I wish I put cigarettes in there, you know. But because then it was a bad thing, it was a struggle that I had to learn how to walk that one over years ago. That's the way it So all of that just to say that. You know, if you're writing something down on the paper, just take it, and it can be at any time, and if it's not tonight, and you need to drop it in on another night or day, that's okay. It does, does everything does not have to be in one fell swoop, because the Lord will bring things to mind. But just fold your paper over. Just fold your paper over, nobody else has to know what's on there. But the water then washed away, and that symbolizes then how everything, when we bring it to the feet, when we put our prayers and petitions at the feet of Jesus, we lay it down at the cross. It's just washed away by the blood, and then it's totally forgotten, and nobody else. Nobody else. else is, nobody else is visible. Great. 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 Mm -hmm. Any fear that you might have as well.
what's going to happen after six or eight weeks when we do this, uh, you're going to find the prophetic act. And it, it, is there any record of wrong? That nope. Not with God, there's not. <laughs> it's all white clean, so you'll find down the road, whatever the issues that go into the river, when we pull these out, they're mostly going to be blank. Yep. Do you understand? Pastor Tunji, what an awesome start it would be at the new facility that everybody was absolutely blank and holy. Amen. <laughs> holy and blank. Do you understand? <laughs> we, we, we'll be in a, such a unity. Mm. We're, we're, going in, we're, we're crossing over into a new step, right? right. We're crossing over into a new beginning. A new uh, opportunity of what God is going to do for uh, not only for uh, each and every one of us, but also in the unity. I'm going to say ecclesia, but I know there are Greek scholars in here, and they're going to say it's ecclesia. So I'll go through both. Mm -hmm. All right. But how can how can just the family of God and the sons and daughters? So we will. That means <laughs> it's kind of like you're standing at the Jordan, right? And, every, and having that faith to step into the Jordan when it's at high tide, mm -hmm. high, high river coming down. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you step in, God turns it and stops, mm -hmm. right? So the miracles start happening immediately. And then we all walk over the whole tribe, mm -hmm. the glory center tribe. Mm -hmm. What an international nations of the mind we are. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. We are a international, national, and I say tribe, please, um, because it talks about the 12 tribes of Israel, mm. okay? And in, in Revelations 22, 2, it says the leaves are the healing to the nations. One of the other interpretations is the leaves are the healing to the 12 tribes. Mm. So the leaves are the healing to each and every one of us, wherever we may be around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, DG's hooking in, like uh, uh, Pastor um, Praveen Chan. Uh, Chan. Mm. Uh, I, uh, I, you remember when we were there? Right? Yep. How God, how how revival poured out there two years ago. It's still going. Yes. They are still in revival after two years. And more, and it's getting greater and greater and greater. And Pastor Jack Prasad as well in, in C3 Church. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where, you know, uh, where we went, uh, um, oh my goodness, um, in, in 2019, I was in five nations. And <laughs> Tanzania is still in revival. Ghana is still in revival. Praise God. King. Right now, Liberia is in full revival. And you might say, well, you know, where is Liberia? It's right on the equator. Mm -hmm. And they have a population of about 6 million people. They should have a population of um, close to 100 million because they've been genocide so many times. They've been under Ebola. They've been under everything. You know, uh, Nigeria has 120 million people. It's a huge, it's the largest population. They have over 60 million people in their armed forces. Ooh. Wow. But Liberia, a nation of only 6 million people, have a Christian population of over 88%. Wow. Mm -hmm. They've gone through every persecution. Oh my goodness. Through that persecution, uh, there's a remnant there. There's a whole bunch of different denominations, but they are one. Mm. And uh, and it's exciting. So bless you guys, uh, Bishop Dr. John Kuntum. Okay, you might say, okay, well, why am I saying that? Well, he's one. Of, he, he's the head guy for the AOG, mm. not only in Liberia, uh, around most like Africa and and the world. Mm -hmm. Like he's well. Right. One of these days he's going to show up here. Mm -hmm. And and he's part of Resurrection Army. Mm -hmm. These major, there's five major bishops 
in Liberia, and they're all part of the unity of what God is doing there. They dropped, the, they, they've kept their identity, but they dropped every religious thing, and they want unity over, mm. over denomination. Amen. They, they still have their identity. And, uh, and so revival is breaking out in the evangelical churches, it's breaking out in the full gospel churches, and the <laughs> whole bunch of them. Exactly is what Pastor Tunji said, liberty and freedom, that's what they want. There's, they, they, they don't want to be tied up with a religious spirit anymore. Do you want to be tied up with a religious spirit? No. no. Have any of you been tied up with a religious spirit? Yes. yes. Have you? <laughs> Please stand. <laughs> Please stand. And if you haven't written, written a petition, if you still think the religious spirit is grabbing, just make that a note and throw it in the pot. Mm -hmm. Throw it in the bowl. Because the religious spirit, you need to be in a place of total freedom in the Holy Spirit. Because the religious spirit just wants to put the Holy Spirit in a box and keep you in a box and keeping you from your destiny of what God has called you to be as a son or daughter of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, Pastor Tunji and Pastor Adoroke, they, uh, over the last three weeks, I have, or four weeks, or even longer, but they have really been exhorting you to boldness. Uh, Pastor Tunji, last, last Friday, he was exhorting you to boldness. Uh, I was just jumping out of my chair. It's hard for me to be quiet when I'm... So it's okay for you, if you're bold, let say, praise the Lord, or... Yes, or oh. whatever it is, just let it out. <laughs> okay, just let just let the Holy Spirit out. Whether it's here or at home or on the street, let the Holy Spirit out. Let that boldness out. The Holy Spirit does not interrupt the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Last Friday, Pastor Tunji mentioned something. And I spoke out in boldness because it was jumping right up from the innermost part of me. And I said, he made the comment in regards to what's holding us back. What's holding us back from boldness? What's holding, well, uh, it's, it's our belief in who we are and are we standing in that faith? Mm. So if anything's attacking your faith, it's fear. Mm. If anything's attacking who, who you believe, what's the opposite of, of belief? Doubt. Doubt. Could those be things that you may want to write down if, if, if uh, things are attacking you? Hebrews um, chapter 12, verse 2. I, I didn't want to start there, but um, Hebrews, let's just, uh, let's just go there, Leslie. If you've got your Bible, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to do verses 1 and 2, and then she's going to go right into this boldness thing. And if anybody needs a pen or paper, just, just, continue, to, uh, just continue to pass it around. And remember, what's going to happen, do you see how these, you, there's, there's a pen there. You, these guys look, do, do they look like they're, all these agitated comments that went in here. Do they look like fish or guppies or frogs trying to jump out? <laughs> do, you, do you understand? Whatever your greatest difficulty was, do you not see how peaceful they are in the water? Mm. God of peace I am. And, mm -hmm. and, and what, you're, what you're seeing is that they're, they're naturally going to sing and over a period of time, oh, thank God. Mildred and I have known each other for over 45 years. Oh. Give us an elbow. <laughs> <laughs> we were in jail together. We were in jail together. Confession <laughs> 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 time. I was a peace <laughs> officer, correctional officer here <laughs> in Brandon. Oh. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I was put on what they called the Special Forces Riot Group because they, they just they uh, they just knew I had an ability to look after anything that needed to be talked to, <laughs> right? Anyway, so uh, uh, any so the reason I'm saying this is, you know, I gave my heart to the Lord. 
54 years ago. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I came into, you know, the, the actualization of the Holy Spirit 35 years ago. Here in Brandon. Mm -hmm. Here in Brandon 35 years ago. And I can remember the first miracle 35 years ago. And Leslie was at work that day. Uh, she was working emergency and uh, at, at, at the hospital. And uh, so when you work in emergency in the hospital, you know, you get to know all the doctors, you get to know all the firemen, you get to know all the police, right? Because everything comes in there. So they all knew Leslie. Mm -hmm. Of course, they all kind of knew me through other things, <laughs> okay? And in saying that, 35 years ago, the first miracle that the Lord allowed me to be a part of, or that he did here, is that a couple brought, uh, I guess they call it Siamese twins. There were two babies whose heads were not locked together. And, and, and they were going to do the operation for the first time in Winnipeg, where they were going to uh, dissect both. To, se to, se to separate them. To separate, to separate them. And the chances of survival was like 5%. And they came over, Leslie, and, and I prayed for them. And, and I anointed them with oil and I prayed for them. And, uh, you know, praise God. You know, everything was good. And uh, so 35 years ago, uh, the Lord did that first miracle. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting, eh? Why, 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 why would somebody come knock at my door? Why would somebody come knock at our door and say, we were told that you and your wife can pray and, 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 and heal things. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, they didn't even know what words to use. And I said, yeah, we pray in faith. We pray in faith. We pray. And we pray for the doctors. We pray for, I think, the Siamese. And the good news is, the operation was successful. And they live, and they're still living. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, as far as I know, yeah. You know what? Another miracle that happened, <clears throat> and this this can be this is documented. And uh, some of the people that were in the house at the time are still here in Brandon. Yeah. And uh, why did the Lord pick our house when we were having a prayer time over on 13th Street, that big salmon brick house? Lawson's old house. That was it. That's the one that we took. Mm -hmm. We were in there and we we're having this wonderful prayer time. And all of a sudden, a bunch of Leslie's buddies come crashing through the door and knocking on the door. And some of my friends, and we're saying, the fire hall. Well, the fire hall and the police department, they're busting in and we're having a prayer time with, with are you ready for this, Pastor Tony? Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this, Brock? You want prayer? You want this, David? Hey. Well, I don't know why the Lord chose us here in Brandon back then, 35 years ago, maybe 34. And they were in awe because there was a fire on the roof. And they're walking through the building. Yeah, somebody had called into the apartment and reported the Holy that Ghost and fire was on the roof. Fire because they saw smoke rising. <laughs> but in actuality, the Holy Spirit was making manifest his presence. Yeah. They saw it, the firemen and the policemen, they saw it, and, but they couldn't put it out. <laughs> but they could walk in. Are you ready for that? Amen. I don't know why we didn't have whole broke out revival 35 years ago. It was, it was only a few years after that we had to, you know, we, we went on our way west. But now we're back. I think the Lord equipped us and trained us for 30 years to prepare for this moment to be with you here at Glory City. Mm. He has used us. He has used us as fire starters, as glory carriers to start revivals in many nations. And, and that's, that's the goodness of God, that he trains his people up. And oftentimes, you know, most people don't know. <laughs>
Amen. So that's approximately, so they've, they've been farming in that area for over 250 years. Mm -hmm. why, why, why am I saying these things? Is it, is it an accident that we're in? Not. It's God's timing. Amen. Mm -hmm. And they were Christians. And my, my, uh, my grandpa on the Werner side, Gave, him, gave up his life not even 20 minutes from here for the survival of others. They went through the ice. They came in with horses from justice because it was at the end of winter and they had run out of food and he was the leader in that community. So they came in with a whole bunch of horses and different things and they crossed over 
over just by the bridge there. They came in light and they left heavy and with his particular rig, he went through the ice. Oh. He died helping to save others alive. Great. They pulled him out, uh, but he died of hypothermia three days later. But so many people were saved alive for the food. So the reason I'm saying this is history. I don't know where you're from, and I don't know where you're going, but you're here now. <laughs> I've been able to track my heritage back a thousand years. Mm. Do you know who Robert De Bruce is? <laughs> Heard of him. Yeah? He's my relative. Well, he's the king of Scotland when they, uh, Scotland and, and England fought it all. And he's the one that's brave part of it. Scotland! <laughs> all right, Scotland won! My mother's from Aberdeen. Yeah. Really? So I'm just saying, the hair, what? My relative's Rob Roy. Okay. Oh. Uh, that's why there's so much forgiveness today. <laughs> Scotland got their freedom and their liberty. But I'm just saying, I've been able to track it back. My point is that the blessings for a thousand, genera a thousand generations went ahead and we're it. Mm. You understand? That's the exciting part. The blessings and the, and the promises of a thousand generations have gone ahead. I can't wait to meet my relatives. Mm -hmm. How happy they are right now. Say, okay, what we sacrificed. Most of you here are, are settlers or, or uh, homesteaders or pioneers or, or you, you, your families left because of persecution or a better life to come to Canada, is what I'm saying. Your, your family members. So, so many have sacrificed their life and everything to come to someplace new that has liberty and freedom, freedom of religion. This was all founded on the freedom of religion. And you want to know something? Are you going to let them take it away from us? Yeah. No. Amen. Amen. You understand? Yeah. I'm not going to go. Anyway, let's, re mm -hmm. let's go with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give you some reasons why the enemy can only go back four generations, maybe or maybe 10. Well, we can go a thousand generations, and I'm standing here a part of it, and some of you are too, if the Lord would give you to understand what the, the track has been for you to be in Brandon, Manitoba in 2020, mm -hmm. to go forth into 2021, to take this land, because your forefathers and those who had a great sacrifice planned it that you would be here, mm. and that you would be prospering in the Holy Spirit. Not any, you know, and, and and everything else that goes with that. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how you got here, mm -hmm. but you're here to be prospering in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're here to prosper. The sons and daughters of the Most High. It doesn't matter what our background is or, or or what our nation is. We are one in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because somewhere between the next six. To eight weeks, this is all going to turn red. Mm. Everything's going to come out of the paper. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be red. Oh. The transformation, the same transformation that happened to you immediately. Mm. This is going to take some time. Mm -hmm. And this scripture will tell you why. So, we're in um, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. One and two. the joy of accomplishing the 
and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. So there, there is, <clears throat> there are, there is other translations in regards to the shame, and there's another scripture uh, that goes with it that guilt and shame were nailed to the cross. Okay, guilt and shame, and everything was nailed to the cross. So sometimes in our greatest difficulties, because of what this life is, we go and we pull that nail out. And we take on that shame, or we take on that guilt. Jesus already paid the price for it. If you're dealing with shame and guilt and rejection, or whatever that may be, write it down, throw it in there. Because Jesus has already, as Pastor Tunji said, you know, it is finished. But sometimes we get into a place of, um, we're not through the completion yet in our mind, or whatever it may be. And we've got to mature into what, who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High. So it's a, it's a maturity thing. This is nothing more than maturity. Being, maturing who you are as a son. So that these things that come to attack you don't hold you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't hold you captive. It doesn't tie you up. So you know that you have all authority. Pastor Tunji, I think in the last... Um, I know Adoroki did at least once or twice, but Pastor Tunji at least five times, Colossians 2, 8 to 10, in regards to all authority has been given to us. Mm -hmm. He has been preaching that. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe, do you believe that you have all authority? And if you have all authority, that means guilt, shame, and anything else that wants to attack you, you throw it in here because I have all authority and I'm just growing in my maturity. So the next time it comes on, I'm going to be able to be in a place in a better stance. Mm -hmm. Not only for myself, but for my family, for my friends, and for my, uh, for my family at church. Because it's, it's a maturing process. It's the process, and that's what I want to teach on tonight. Go ahead. I know we're going to do the... I, I want you. I want you to do. No, go, go to uh, uh, First Corinthians, uh, chapter two, verse five. Because I want to. I want to. I, I want you guys. Because what Pastor Tunji was talking about last Friday was boldness, and we need to become that place that we know that we have all authority and walking in that boldness and to know it's not us. It wasn't Ray Johnson putting his hands upon those Siamese twins and the, and the, and the Lord he, bringing the surgery and healing them. It was the blessings of God, right? Mm -hmm. But I still, I still prayed in faith. Okay? You just have to, I'm going to pray in faith. I'm no longer being a captive to fear. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who's that? You, you show me that one. You better than I do. <laughs> That's the Lion of Judah, yeah. ready to attack. <laughs> uh, Murray, you do that. Mm -hmm. you do it. Okay, go ahead. So, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse, verses uh, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. And so, it says, I came to you in a state of weakness. We all come to the Lord in a state of weakness so many times, right? Mm -hmm. I came to you in a state of weakness and fear and great courage. <coughs> And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, using clever rhetoric, but they were delivered in demonstration of the power, pardon me, in the demonstration of Holy Spirit operating through me, and of his power stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom and rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. Amen. And that's that's the key. It's the power of God. And the authority that you walk in. Yeah. Mm. Amen? Amen? Okay. Um, I'm going to read out of Colossians chapter 2, 8 to 10, and a couple others out of, uh, out of the New Jerusalem Bible. And while I'm here, I, you're going to get your little narrative. Because I, I want to read this out of a couple of, 
couple of different translations so that you get the impact of the authority of who we are. And your homework is going to be in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 17 to 22, 21. I want you to really read that uh, because we're not going to have time tonight. In Ephesians chapter 1, uh, you can read from 17 to uh, 21. Because it says there, in a nutshell, is that everything is under Jesus' feet. Mm. Oh. Uh, What's in your soul? <laughs> it says everything is under Jesus' feet. <laughs> if you look, if you actually look under the soles of your feet, it's written in there. Everything <laughs> is under Jesus' feet, and I've given all authority. John, can I take a look at your foot? Yeah, at the bottom. I think it's written in there in two languages. <laughs> Do you, do you understand? We we have authority that yes. we stand on. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we have to know who, what we yes. believe in. And, and, and in John chapter 11, uh, verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. And nobody is going to die. Nobody will die. You're going to live mm -hmm. forever. Do you believe this? You believe this. Okay, so in that belief, resurrection life, you mean, that means you're just trying to change some postal codes. So Amen. you might as well just have as much fun as you want to have in the Holy Spirit. Say, just be open to where God's going to take you. He'll, wherever the foot of Abraham goes, every promise that Abraham was given by God walks in that foot. And whenever the foot of Jesus goes, all authority and power, promises, power. Promises power. Promises power. Promises power. On the soles of your feet. That's the right from birth, Murray. And you got big feet. <laughs> <laughs> Size 13. I think you've got a manuscript in there. <laughs> right, go ahead. Got to get okay. a picture of that. So this here, <laughs> when Leslie reads this here, I want you, it's, it's kind of a prose, it's kind of a parable, it's kind of a short story. So enjoy it, but it needs to be in you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, the title is, is Big Opportunities, and, and Candace Simmons is the author. She and her husband and a few other people, um, they were the ones that um, brought forth the passion campaign. And so she writes here, she says, and you know what, I think probably guys, whether they're big, big boys or little boys, you know, and maybe some girls, but for the most part, you know, I'm familiar with guys who love a good super, superhero story. Mm -hmm. Guys like, you know, the superheroes, right? Um, so, so she says, I love a good superhero story, but who doesn't? I think we all have those times when we wish that we could just call on our superpowers and save the world. Well, she says, a few months ago, I had a dream of Wonder Woman dressed as a bride. Wonder I mean, I didn't watch the stuff, but I kind of know the picture. Anyway, a Wonder Woman dressed as a bride, but she was still wearing her Wonder Woman outfit underneath the wedding dress. Now that would be funny. <laughs> and I heard the Lord say, I love and cherish you, my bride, and I intend to see to it that you arise as my fearless ones. Mm -hmm. So there he is speaking to his bride, the church, the ecclesia. Mm -hmm. The Father is releasing his fearless spirit today to conquer every foe within and without. He is doing great and marvelous things. Whatever intimidated you in the last season of your life, will not intimidate you any longer. Mm -hmm. For God has given you Holy Spirit, and He lives within you. Mm -hmm. One, I, think, I think there's a theme here. We keep hearing about Holy Spirit living in us. We keep hearing, you know, it's spoken over and over and over again here. And He lives with you in you. One of the descriptions of Holy Spirit um, in Isaiah 11, 2 is the spirit of mighty power. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of mighty power lives within you and I. Mm -hmm. Which can literally be translated the spirit of a mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. That word is used to describe a proven warrior. It's the same one used to describe the Lord in Psalm 24, 8. And in that sense, there is, of course, they're taking it as a passion translation, considering they offered it. Um, so who is this glorious?
you every day. So it's pounding that into us again. Like, we need to get this. Like, Holy Spirit, Lord really needs us to really get that. And because he keeps telling us about it. So, but what a concept, hey? What a concept. And everything's under your feet. <laughs> and then Colossians 2, uh, verse 10. And our own completeness, completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority on the universe. Mm -hmm. So the head of every kingdom and authority on the universe dwells within us. Mm -hmm. So what kind of authority? We walk in so much authority. Well, yeah. let's say there's so much authority in us. Now we're having to learn how to walk in that. Mm -hmm. We have walked into a portion of it perhaps so far. But we need to come to the realization of that greater authority that dwells within each and every one of us. If I can trust you for little, I can trust you for a lot. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned in mentoring people for the last 30 years in many different nations, at all levels, even, even bishops and other higher bishops, they still, they call us mom and dad, they call me father. Because they know that the teaching that they're getting and the mentoring that they're getting is something they never got before. And that's love. Mm -hmm. Love and teaching, but also the authority and the power. And they, and they come into a place of peace. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter who you are. At one end or the other, everybody wants to be in a place that they fit properly. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they, they can fulfill the destiny that God has called them to be, whatever that may be. Whether you're on the street uh, uh, taking some, sharing your sharing your testimony and somebody coming to the Lord, or uh, if you're ministering to a president <laughs> of a nation, or an ambassador, or a person for, uh, of a high corporation, it doesn't matter. The Lord will prepare you for that. Every every level, so that His love goes through, because every one of those individuals. It's lacking love somewhere. Yeah. All they want is the wrong power in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord told me that we have entered into a time in history where the opportunities are great mm -hmm. and even bigger than we ourselves are able to comprehend. Mm -hmm. And when we have eyes to see them and ears to hear of them, then we can enter in. Mm -hmm. The only things that will hold us back from our God's opportunities awaiting us our fear and a feeling of intimidation. Mm -hmm. So the only thing holding us back from our God opportunities. What did you speak last night to me? The tribulations. You spoke so well on uh, Isaiah 61, 1 to 4, and Psalm 91, but you had mentioned in your testimony that there was tribulations, there was trauma that caused difficulties during that time of your peace. So that trauma. The enemy wants to come in, even though uh, she can recite Psalm 91 front back, and she was exhorting it, but she still came to the place and saying, there was a time of difficulty, of trauma, where I needed to have this scripture inside me so I could speak it against the trauma, the difficulty. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to know how the voice of God through the word comes back, to come against the fear, to come against whatever the trauma is, to come against whatever the tribulation is. It's going to come. But just receive it. <laughs> and say, be gone in Jesus' name. <laughs>
Kikuchi. <laughs> I love illustrated prophetic acts. I want so, you to watch what's going to happen. Okay, and so she, she goes on to say, I also had another amazing dream. It was like I was on the set of a Mission Impossible movie. Only this was called Mission Possible. I was scaling buildings, jumping over and rolling under cars, and leaping from rooftop to rooftop. And the Lord said, this is your mission if you choose to accept it. Ooh. Wow. This is your mission, Shannon, if you choose to accept it. <laughs> and so this is our mission. We are called to arise like a phoenix by the power of the blood and the revelation of Christ. To be the church that God has called us to be. To be a beacon, a light to the nations, a witness to our communities, and everyone around us. His fearless ones. We are called to be his fearless ones. So I can tell you that as we minister around different places, she says, she says that there just have been some okay. very radical, creative, and mind-blowing plans mm -hmm. that have that the that the Lord has been up to mm -hmm. through his people. Christians in the marketplace and all the mountains of society are hearing the Father and following. The fearless ones are arriving, and it's currently happening. And so we get to join that party of the arising fearless ones. The Lord is saying in this hour, my people are being released. They are my shining ones, for they radiate with my glory. Amen. Each one of us in here we radiate with his glory. Mm -hmm. And he says, and I have prepared them to astound the world with signs, wonders, and miracles. For I am loosing my own brand of superheroes on the earth. Mm -hmm. So if you ever been dreaming or imagining all of being a superhero, here's your chance. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to imagine it anymore. You can't be that. <laughs> oh, you've got big, big so, muscles. Mm -hmm. big. So, so some may appear ordinary on the outside, but the Lord says, I have set my love, my favor, and my glory on them. Just you watch, my godly lovers, as they move out of their hiding places. Mm -hmm. Show, so, so show your red vision. ball to, the, to everybody that you caught the red ball with one hand. Mm -hmm. oh, right? Show everybody mm -hmm. and the people watching. Like, you mm -hmm. got the red ball. Okay, all right. Now just mm -hmm. hold it tight. Keep going, Leslie. Mm -hmm. So like Gideon, they are emerging with a new courage, a new boldness, and a new fearlessness. That's who we are. Mm. For we, the Lord says, I have been preparing my church for such an hour as this. And they will rise to the tops of the mountains yes. of society. And they will overshadow the earth, eclipsing mm. anything the world has ever seen before. Yeah. Yeah. What a word. What a power. What a power. Amen. Amen. For God's power people. Amen. So what you have, those, those who have a ball, hold it this way tight, wrist straight, okay? So Pastor Tunji and Pastor Adoroke, you can use two hands to get that ball out of their hand. But they, 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 can they can resist you as much as they can to stop you from pulling that uh, ball out of your hand. But you, you can do whatever you can to try to get that ball by with two hands. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> if you just run, you strong. <laughs> or you're crushing the ball to get it out. <laughs> oh, wow. Just going to listen to the people see over there. Turn to yeah. Oh. Is she got it yet? <laughs> Don't you give up. <laughs> Don't you give up, Pastor Adder. Okay. Don't you give up. Because you know what these red balls represent? These red balls represent the hurt, the pain that is in your life that you're holding oh. on to, that you do not want to you do not want to let go and give it to God. And you, and the Lord has sent you uh, servants of the living God to try to cry out that whatever that pain is in your heart, whatever that pain is in your being, but you're resisting to hold it back. And Jesus says. Let it go to me, says the Lord. Let that, let that burden be released from you. Quit holding onto it with all your strength, all your might, all your being. Give it unto me, says the Lord thy God. Give me your burden. Give me your burden.
burden. Give me your burden. Give me your burden. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give it up to God. Huh? That, if that's the way you're holding on to whatever your fear is, whatever your burden is, God wants you to release it into his hand. Many of you oh, yeah. have been holding on to things that way all your life because of fear, pride, anger, because you've been molested, because you've been beaten up, because you've been rejected. And God says, no, no, just both hands. Give it unto me in my hands. Mm -hmm. Many of you have fought with God, with those burdens, and you refuse to give them up. And the Lord says, just release it mm -hmm. unto me, into my love, into my river. Come with me and relax. Mm -hmm. Come with me and be free in the liberty of that. Do not hold on to the pain of the root of the bitterness that comes from whatever that red ball is in your life that the enemy threw at you and you grabbed it and has become part of your being for many, many years. And you're saying, I, ha I do not know how to let it go. I do not know how to let go of that burden. I do not know how to let go of that fear. I do not know how to let go of that hidden sin. And the Lord says, just give it to me. Mm -hmm. Just release it. Because it is finished. Just give it to my servants and they will minister to you. Mm. And then you will do the same and minister to the next person in love, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness. Let the red balls go. Mm -hmm. And part of everything that's going in this pot, everything that's going in this pot are the red balls that you're holding, holding on to maybe for five years, 25 years, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, give it unto me. Quit holding on to it like Murray. Quit holding on to it like Brock. You saw the tenacity. They, they thought they were fighting it so that they could win the battle. And God says, no. You're winning the battle in your human flesh. Let it go in the spirit. And then you will rise up above it like an eagle. And I will give you my strength. Not your strength. I'll give you my strength. Whoa. Let the red balls go. Mm -hmm. Let them go. Mm -hmm. Over the next six weeks, so many of you in the middle of the night, God's going to show you whatever that is. Write it down and throw it. Let it go. It may, you may have been offended by somebody. And that offense has brought such a bitter root unto you intergenerationally or whatever it may be. And God's saying, you're holding on to it like that. You're holding on to it like that. I can trust you with a little. I can trust you with a little. I can trust you with a lot. But you're holding on to a red ball. I cannot use a servant who is bound up with a red ball. And all you're going to do is transfer the red ball of that burden, of that shame, of that guilt onto the next person that you're ministering to. I want you to be free of it. I want you to be free of it. Amen. As Pastor Tunji was saying. I want to destroy every chain, mm. every feather. Mm. Isaiah 10, 27. It says, the anointing smashes and destroys the yoke of oppression. Mm. You don't want it be, to be a broken thing that could be fixed up by the enemy, welding it back together with other chains. Mm. We want it completely destroyed and gone. We want that fire so hot at 2,000, 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, dancing with Yeshua in the fire. And I'll tell you, if there was any shackles, and if there was anything on them, they would have melted off. Or if they would have been dancing. If they put them in there with shackles, if they were chained up, which they probably were to start with, they were, the shackles would have melted off them, and they would have been dancing in the fire of Jesus, totally free in the fire. Who's hotter than God? God's higher than hell! Amen. Because it's going to go one of these days, too. <laughs> well, our, our Lord is a God of second chances. 35 years ago, 34 years ago, I was pursued by a demon in a man. Why would the Lord pick me? 
because I have no fear. <laughs> On that street, you can ask my kids, you can ask Leslie, I was sick and tired of the devil beating up and not coming at me directly and coming, and, and coming at my wife Leslie and coming at my kids. And I said, you want to fight? I'm sick and tired of you. You come and take me on. You come and take me on. You couldn't come in after my, my, my wife and my kids. I'm sick and tired of you, bully. Come right now. I'm ready to take you on. Go ashatahihi abba ashatahihi. Go ashatahihi ashatahihi. Leslie was there. Anybody knows that house? It's a 2,000 square foot brick house with a foot and a, two feet of foundation. And that whole house was shaking. The whole house was shaking. Kids were in the basement, they were running up. I said, what's happened? We're working over. And there I am, fighting with the devil. And the Lord there is, well, that's why he chose that guy with that forehead like Clint, but he's pretty slow knowing what to do the right things right. He's gonna learn that this is not as bad. So we'll just let it go for a bit. You can go look at that house. There, it, it has a glass. It has glass all the way around the, uh, the full west side or the south side. You know, it, we have, it was a beautiful place. So the screens of hell were going through there. It, 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 it was the, the glass was shaking about ready to break because of the screens of hell. Huh? Yeah. Everything was shaking. And then there was a point I knew I was going to lose. <laughs> you ever get to that point? You know you're going to lose the fight. And I said, and I said, and I said, Oh God, forgive me. I should not be in this fight by myself. Will you come? Will you come? And so it's, it's like there was the uh, the devil to blow me away with the 357 Magnum, and then and then God, Jesus just came in behind me with a big bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to know my my whole neck and all my vocal here changed physically, naturally, and spiritually from that point. It grew about three inches all the way around my neck, and I started praying in tongues the right way and asking the Lord to come in and 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 take care of this problem. And He did. So it was instead of you using the blue and water pistol. Yeah, I was just first. And, and that was your that was your start off. But the Lord loved my tenacity. He loved that I had no fear, but I needed to come under authority. Mm -hmm. And through the through these experience, I came under authority. So when we when we teach authority, it's because uh, I did it. The, I've done it the wrong way. And we know what the right way is, and I repented of the wrong ways. Mm -hmm. So in, re in closing, in closing, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9, and I'm reading out of the New Jerusalem Bible, and it says, For in him bodily lives the fullness of, of all that God is. Mm. All that God is is in the body. There's all that God is. Present tense. All that the God is lives inside you now. Amen. And and so and so it was with me when I when I was uh, when I was when I took the devil on for a fight. <clears throat> and it is in union with him that you have been made full. He is the head of every rule and authority. What I was trying to do is put myself above that. I was trying to come in against the the rule and authority, you know, uh, without the authority of the Lord. So I had, I couldn't, I, I repented, I humbled myself, and I, and I said, I'm not going to do this again, Lord, uh, you know, and all of a sudden, a whole new tongues and everything came out in authority, and it has been with me ever since. And the devil knows it, because I've had a face-to-face -face encounter with him. Praise God, and God won. He knows who I am. <laughs> and he knows how you are, but he, he and I got a person <laughs> in God one. And it's been many times. So you have to know your authority. Mm. Amen. So in verse 11 it says, 
and it was in union with him. In other words, it's almost like I became an alloy. In other words, I got fused with the body, the body, the body, yeah, the Trinity. He came in me 35 years ago because I came under authority and I and I got rid of this forehead like a flint. Like you got that, bro. So it's a good thing. It's just it's got to go. Oh. Mm -hmm. I had it. Murray had it. Mm -hmm. But when you come to a place of authority, that forehead like flip that members got, I want you to know you wouldn't be at the glory center if you didn't have a forehead like flip. Mm -hmm. Like Dr. John, this is double. I, I don't know how we're going you know, to get through that, but May, that's been your problem. <laughs> <laughs> The reason you're here is that you have a forehead like flint. Mm -hmm. And you want to walk in the authority and the power that God has made you to. And you're going to be trained up as his worship warriors. Mm -hmm. Worship warriors. Mm -hmm. We have awesome worship here. We have awesome worship here. It's a beautiful. It's so pure. Oh, praise God. That is the first key. The revival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy Word of God being preached, second key. Happening here. The third thing we have to do as a body is to get rid of all the dross. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the fear. Get all rid of everything so that we can move together as an army. Mm -hmm. Not a disjointed one, but one that's locked shoulder to shoulder. So we know exactly how one person five, five rows down, five rows back is going to respond to that. And we're all going to respond in the same way because we're going to get in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to take, Brian. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to take cities when people are locked together like that. Yeah. Not a lock up of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. no. A lock down of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every one of us together fused. <laughs> Unseparable. Two years ago, I, I think I told this to maybe one or two people. I don't know. Two years ago, at Princess Park, two angels came and spoke to me. How many have heard this? Okay, two people. Okay, so you're going to. I saw them too. Yeah, or, what? I saw them. Yeah. Ooh. Two angels came up and spoke, spoke to me. And <laughs> it's kind of cool. And I was inviting them back to our house because I knew they were angels and, I, and my daughter wanted to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, I said, we've we got all, lots of room for you to stay. Why don't you come stay at our place? And they said, well, we're staying at this place, but we'll give you the answer in the morning. So in the morning, uh, talking to them, said, yeah, we can give them the relation to go to your place. I said, all right, praise the Lord. And by two o'clock that afternoon, they came to me and said, we've just been given a new assignment. I said, oh, gee, I was looking so forward. And I said, uh, can I pray for you before you go? And they both smiled. <laughs> they both smiled. They both looked the same. They had, like, they had these beards that, uh, like, were painted on, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, they were chiseled. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're both, like, six foot two, six foot three. And when they worshiped the Lord, there was a light over them. I can see the light over them when they worshiped. There was, there was such a holiness. And so, <laughs> uh, you're close. Come here. Uh, no, 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 uh, David. David, come close. So when the angels, I, I, so you, you're about the same height. Just look at me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I just look, come over here. Just, just mm -hmm. turn. Yeah. So I said, can I pray for you? And they smiled. And I said, when I pray, I like to get up close. I went like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and they said, uh, the wings aren't there right now. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, the wings aren't there right now. I said, oh. So I, I gave them both a pat down. <laughs> I said, I was so looking forward to you coming into, your, into our home. And they just said, we have been with you everywhere. Every place your foot has set in your ministry, and they even said the name Resurrection Life. Mm -hmm. Every place we have been there, and then many have been. Many have been. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, wow. Wow. 
I said, well, I just pray that you have a good, wherever you're going, flight, wherever your next assignment is. And they kind of smiled. And, uh, and I said, well, now you can pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they, said, they, they smiled. And we prayed over you so much, Ray. Mm -hmm. But we, what we have done, I will let you know that we have stayed branded out there. Mm. The north, the south, and the east, and the west has been staked out mm. for the glory of the Lord. Wow. So it's, it's done. Mm. Heaven has done it here. It's all about timing. Mm. It's all about coming together as one. Mm -hmm. And they're with us now. They, they, want, they, they want to see this happen. Mm. So the time... The city has been staked out. Mm. So what we do here is so important before we go out there. Mm. What happens in his house and the glory in this house, we have to be fused together as one. We have to be able to love as the Father loves, unconditional love, not, not conditional love, but unconditional love. We need, we need to minister to the Father first. We need to be at that place in ministry where we're ministering to him, which I have seen here, and I, and, I, and, I, and I said to Marie, I said, continue to worship this way because the Lord is going to show you, where the Lord has been showing me, a, a tears coming down the Father's eyes and how pleased he is with the worship here. Mm -hmm. Because you're worshiping such purity. Mm -hmm. And I love this worship system. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we need to come in and keep it as a place of purity. That's what I wanted to inject today. We need to come to a place and continually be filled with the Holy Spirit, not put the Holy Spirit in a box. And I want you to know Leslie and I are filled to the top of, of anointing oil. <laughs> and uh, you all will be too. Amen. You better be hungry to be filled. And right now we're in the month of Shephai. It, it's... it's I haven't got time to teach on it, but one of the, one of the um, prophetic acts from heaven, one of the things that the Father in heaven speaks right now, is that he is pouring out his oil right now during this next six weeks. Mm. Mm. This is during the month of, of Shazban. Mm. And, the, and what he's pouring out is straight murder. Mm. He is pouring out straight myrrh and David. And myrrh is going in to each and every one of you. The myrrh of God, you can you look it up. This the process of myrrh, I'm going to teach on. I can teach on all the anointing all. But myrrh is being poured out into his sons and daughters. Because if there's anything, if there's anything that needs to be brought to the surface, myrrh does it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the perfect picture of the Messiah is the anointing or the anointed one. The fragrance and the smell is myrrh. That's the first smell. And it permeates the soul. <laughs> it permeates the soul. So Brock asked me last Sunday, how's your soul? I said, okay, what's this guy doing here? That's what is happening. On Sunday was the first day of Shazvan, mm. which the myrrh has been pouring out to permeate the soul, mm. to separate all the dross mm. in the body. And the first ingredient of the anointing oil in Exodus 30, I can teach you about the whole thing. You guys, some of the guys have received it. But the anointing oil of myrrh, it's an oil that comes out of myrrh. Oh. And it smells so rustic and wood. It smells so beautiful. And you put frankincense with it and it's beautiful too. But myrrh is being poured into you. And I, I had some stuff splashing on the top of my head. I, I, got, I, I, got a, I got a little oily spot right here. Mm -hmm. A little top where it hit. And you're going to start receiving that. The true stuff in there. And the, and, and, and the anoint because Christ is the anointed one that's going to pour it out on you. Mm -hmm. Be hungry for the other thing that the first ingredient of the anointed oil, myrrh, myrrh is, is, uh, is, myrrh is the first um, step, right? In the Hebraic 
symbol uh, it is number 50, and the 50 is Jubilee right now. Mm. It's freedom, it's liberty in the Holy Spirit. It's a perfect picture of Messiah, the anointed one. Mm. That's what started Sunday, mm. this month. So the perfect picture of the anointed one is being poured out since Sunday, and we had it poured out from heaven. This is heaven's time pouring it out on earth, the murder. Mm. So this here, is nothing more than, okay, if God brings it to you, throw it in there, get rid of it, okay? Because what the murder does is separate those dross things. Because you cut the murder off, you throw it in the boiling pot, and then the murder comes to the top. It comes to the top, David, and he just skins the top and takes you off. Mm -hmm. He takes you off the top, and all the dross stays in the bottom. It stays in the bottom. The murder comes to the top. So that is the process of murder. So when I say the process of murder, he's preparing you as one, as his sons and daughters, as his servants to go out, so that you will be wholly set apart to do his. So you hear his voice, but you pull through the Holy Spirit. You've got all authority. And when you leave here today, by Sunday, you're going to have encounters of the Jesus kind, of the best kind, not leading, only leading people to the Lord, but God is going to heal things in your own life. God is going to bring healing in your own life. And if you need to phone somebody that you've had an offense with and ask for forgiveness, do it. And if that person's dying, well, do it anyway and tell them, oh, Lord, I, I, forgive, uh, I forgive that person who uh, did that bad thing to me. I'm not going to carry it anymore. I was molested as a child. No. I, had, I had to deal with that stuff. Mm. I, I had to go in this park for a while. Mm. And it took time before. It was so much trauma mm. for me as a child. God blanked my head. Leslie said it's still blanked anyway, but no. <laughs> God gave me no memory of it. Mm. He waited to the appointed time. Psalm 90 verse 8. He will bring those things hit in darkness and bring him to, into the light at the appointed time. He did that 35 years ago. Mm. And I was sitting in a room like this. And Maury Blair was the person speaking, the person who wrote Child of Wolf. Go to look it up. Mm. He said, there's a person out there. And that's today. Mm. There's somebody in here. Don't come up. That has been hurt so bad. And God said, I... Opening your memory right now so you can see it, because I'm going to deal with it. I don't want you carrying, holding on to it in your soul anymore. I want it to be released. I don't want you to be walking in that pain anymore. This is the time of the release of those hidden things of sin that happened to you, that you have, God is going to break loose so you're no longer carrying that bondage. That's what this is all about. set free. Liberty and freedom in every area. And you're going to see it. And God is going to bring things to your mind. And if, and if you want prayer afterwards, well, Pastor Tungji and Adam will be in, and others can pray. Oh, gee. Too soon. Sorry. Uh, in Colossians, I just wanted to end, and I, I wanted you to get this. This last thing from Colossians. Thank you, man. Because of the power and the authority that it comes out in this particular writing. And it says, Also it was in union with him that you were circumcised with the circumcision not done by human hands, but accomplished by the stripping away of your old nature, control over your body. So this is just a shadow and type of it. It's already been done. It's some things you reclaim. The shame and guilt, some of the things you pull it back off the cross because you're still in a bitterness and God wants you to be released of that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to be walking in that anymore. And in this circumcision, what's happening right now in the spiritual, in this circumcision done by the Messiah, you were buried along with him by being immersed. You were buried along with him by being immersed. So your grave clothes, <laughs> your your you your great clothes are off, but don't allow them. Don't put them back on. Don't put them back 
on the misery or the bitterness of the grave clothes because you have already been freed of that. Death has no sting, but that doesn't mean you can masquerade like Halloween and put on a grave clothes. God says, I paid the price and it's finished. So stop it. And that's because of stinking thinking from the neck up and you keep on thinking about it and God says, give it to me. Give me your grave clothes. And he said, and then he says, along with uh, being immersed and in union with him, you were also raised up with him, along with him by God's faithfulness. So the opposite of faith is fear. So if you are being attacked by fear, that means God can't take you to the place of pure faith and the faithfulness and the gift of faith that you would walk in. That's part of the Holy Spirit and the gifts that worked when he raised Yeshua from the dead. He raised Yeshua from the dead. Romans 8, 11, right? The same spirit that raised Christ. Mm. What did it do? Did it quicken your mortal body? Mm. Quicken made How quick is your mortal body, bro? <laughs> Not as good as I'd like it to be. I know. But I'm just saying, <laughs> yes. your mortal body. I'm alive. He's alive. He wanted suicide in your life. Yeah. The enemy did. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Did it not happen. You were dead. Because of your sins. Mm. That is because of your, okay, old nature. I'm not going to say the other word. <laughs> but God made you alive Amen. along with the Messiah by forgiving you and all your sins. Amen. So if you are holding on to unforgiveness to yourself, This is not a way to get kissed. <laughs> if you're holding unforgiveness to yourself, be free of it. Mm -hmm. You have an inverted triangle of uh, Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your being. Oh. And to love your neighbor. As yourself. So if you cannot love yourself, how can you love God the way He wants to love you unconditionally when you are only loving yourself conditionally? Mm -hmm. You won't have the breakthrough because of a conditional love that you have put yourself into. You need to break free of that. So that you can love the Lord God, your God, with all your love unconditionally. And you can love your neighbor as yourself unconditionally. Oh, man, you smell good. Oh, you smell like myrrh. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then you go to the mirror and you say, I love you, Ray. <laughs> Regardless of the kids called Captain Weenie for the first 10 or 15 years of your life, mm -hmm. the different things I did that were wrong, mm -hmm. I'm under the blood. Amen. In prison, and you will know this, here. The greatest challenge we have, have had in 30 years of prison ministry, a person who has been incarcerated and who has been in prison regardless of the crime or whatever, some of you are in prison by whatever thoughts, by whatever it is, for the fact that you cannot forgive yourself. We have had so many people that can't get the breakthrough because they could I, they could forgive everything, they could forgive all the situations, but they couldn't forgive themselves for murdering that person. They couldn't forgive themselves for whatever the atrocity was. And I said, well, the Lord has forgiven you with his blood and it's unconditional. Why do you have conditional love towards yourself? That needs to be broken. And, and if that is happening in your life, the Lord's going to bring it up to you. Because you need liberty and freedom because we're moving forward as an army of God out there. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be wonderful as worship warriors, mm -hmm. marches for Jesus and worshiping here and seeing filled up with people coming who are broken the same way so you can minister to them the same way as Pastor Tunji was saying, that you can speak that life into them so that they can get free of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, he, and it says, he wiped away the bill. He wiped away the bill of charges against us. 
I like that. Because of the regulations, it stood as a testimony against us. But he removed it by nailing it to the execution stake. <laughs> he removed everything from you, and he went to the execution stake with joy and celebration because he knew it was going to be freedom and celebration for you today. Amen. So don't be taken back that guilt. Because God wants you to be in a place of joy and share your testimony. Because your testimony is what? Revelations 19.10. The prophecy and the testimony of Jesus. Hmm. Jesus is the prophecy. His testimony in you is the prophecy of freedom for others. Mm. Hallelujah. I know. <laughs> and he stripping away the rulers and authorities of their power. Okay? Yeah. As Pastor Tucci has been exhorting you and Pastor Iroki, all authorities in you. And he stripped away all the authority. You know, and you're getting this really well in, 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 out of Washington, what your broadcast is from for Jesus March. All authority, but he's just—he he, he, looks—he looks big, but you know he's growing into maturity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! But he's just—he's just praying against them principalities and all that because he has all authority. Mm -hmm. He can do that. So can you over your everything. Mm -hmm. And he's stripping the rulers on, and the and the authorities of their power. Mm -hmm. We need to do that together, over Brian. Mm -hmm. over your homes, wherever you're from. Yeah. Like we're from Carter, we've been doing that, and we've been stripping that area. So we we got the whole area, the Westman area. Mm. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by means of the execution state. Mm. So through persecution, came the power and the promises of God in your life, my life, your family's life. Mm -hmm. And how we are going to grow together as a family because of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. What was that Ephesians scripture? Uh, uh, Ephesians. I'm glad you asked. Ephesians, when you go to 17 and 18. There, there's, there's a prophetic act that happened there in chapter 1 Ephesians. And, and the prophetic act that happened, okay, the, this is the only place in the Bible where it's happened. All right? And it says, oh my goodness, in verse 19, and, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? Who believe. That's what Pastor Tuji was getting at last Friday and Sunday. And he says, for those who believe, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. That's verse 19. In verse 20, he says, and he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him by his right hand in heavenly places. And that working of his mighty power in Hebrew means he took his mighty right hand and flexed his muscle. That's everything else he's done was spoken by his word. This is where he took the muscle of his right arm and he raised Yeshua from the dead. And the same power and the mighty right arm that raised Yeshua from the dead, it says in scripture that he raised you from the dead mm -hmm. in resurrection life. So you have the mighty right arm of God and the power and all authority that God is and he used it and he wants you to use it. Amen. And the enemy knows. And it says in verse 23 and 22, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things of the ecclesia, of the ecclesia, of the glory center, <laughs> of his church, of his sons and daughters. We have it. Amen. Praise God. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Worship together as we close for the night. That was powerful session. Oh, thank you, Lord. God bless us all. God bless you. The love of Christ is all in your life. 